We are standing here in Vilnius in front of a Honda HRV, which is not a petrol car anymore, but a full electric car. Yes. And um, you made it fully electric. What, what can you tell about it? What, uh, what is this car? Yeah, so this car was HRV petrol car, and I've converted uh, it to electric in 2008. So, well, started in 2008 and then finished the project in 2010. So, and it's it's special because uh, it's, it's it was the first uh, street legal converted electric car in Lithuania because uh, it, it it has re the registration and all the required documents to drive on the streets. So. Okay, so tell me what's inside of the car. Let's start with the uh, you know, with the trunk. It's already open. So, what what can we see here? Yeah, so this is the main control unit, so electric vehicle management system as I was calling it. So this is the box that uh, has all the kind of brains and power of the car to control the charging, the motor, the, the all the kind of also indication of the parameters to send to the dashboard in the, in, inside of the car. So yeah, this this was designed and built by myself so so to have all the needed functionality because at that time the needed components were simply not on the market at, at a reasonable cost and, and functionalities and yeah so this is kind of the main 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 uh, part of the car that which was taking a lot of effort to design and produce uh, this is charger which was bought off the shelf so it's a more no mains voltage three Three kilowatts charger, which you can plug uh, plug on into a two, 230 volt socket, and then you can charge the battery. But this charge is controlled by this box, so this box is commanding how how to charge the battery, how to keep it in good condition. So what is the charging time? It's uh, charging up to eight hours. So if the pack is fully depleted, the batteries are of like just. The, 20% remaining so then it's charging up to eight hours but of course it depends how much you leave it in the in the, in the battery yeah so. okay and I can even see a USB cable hanging yeah. out of this so USB cable is now for just for diagnostics for just testing and reading some parameters from the computer inside and uh, the system and computer inside is, uh, is uh, built in a kind of prototyping way it's, mm -hmm. it does not ha have a kind of uh, serial, serial production kind of component so it's one off uh, one off ex example and yeah so it is um, it is uh, used as a basis for the production and design of the pro products that we were producing after um, the car was started running and yeah so that's kind of the, the, the background and where it came after after finishing the car okay so okay. yeah so. Um, well, what, what can we what, what's inside of this big EVMS box yeah so there, there are many things inside wow so yeah so there are two sections so this is the high power uh, section and uh, strong signal section and this is uh, low si low level low power signal section so basically that's where computer is and that's where the muscle is and you see that the cables are like finger thick so they are they are capable of uh, having uh, high currents mm -hmm. so this car this motor uh, this controller and motor can produce up, uh, about 1000 amperes of current so the voltage of the system battery uh, pack is 144 and uh, when uh, you are having like 1000 amperes or some a bit more then uh, you can generate about 100 kilowatts of electric power mm -hmm. and yeah we were testing this car on um, on a dyno dyno stand and it was uh, recording like about 65 kilowatts it was we were doing some tests in in Vilnius Gediminas 
That's, that's the power of the motor, 65? It's uh, actually wheel power, so okay. it's uh, actual power after all the losses in transmission, uh, etc. And uh, kind of already. So the motor is uh, capable of producing the like peak about 100 kilowatts power for short times. Uh, so uh, how much horsepower? What what's the to top speed? Guess of that? Uh, top speed uh, is uh, 140 kilometers. Okay. For, for all right. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, by the way, so the motor is built below. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a DC motor that's similar that, that to the ones that are used on like cranes and forklifts. And it's like, yeah, it's attached to the mechanical gearbox. Okay. That is basically used from the previous um, like uh, engine, but just leaving the gearbox in and attaching the motor. So is it uh, automatic? No, it's, it's manual. But for like uh, for, for it was chosen to be a manual for uh, conserving the energy and for simplicity purposes because conserving energy like normal mechanical automatic box you you need to have motor spinning to ha have it functional at some and uh, for well, for simplicity of course then you don't need to kind of start like any kind of control of the gearbox type of uh, mm, solutions or designs to be made and implemented so and in practice it I found that basically driving in a city like Vilnius so in a range like from zero to 70 kilometers you don't need to shift the gear so you put in a third gear and from zero to, to 70, you don't need, you don't feel any kind of lack of power or, or torque there. So, so uh, yeah, so this was kind of the, the, the high power socket where we used to also to test the charging system okay. uh, uh, in the, yeah. In, in, the, in the city, so there were some uh, charging stations that uh, basically had these kind of connectors and we were kind of trying just to use this kind of standard for charging. Okay. So it was yeah. kind of just also the, for testing purposes used one. But uh, another option is actually just to use normal 230 yeah. European connector. Normal one. Yeah. And this one, this is just like the um, PC uh, uh, monitor yeah. kind of like uh, cable. Yeah, yeah, That's because exactly what it is. Yeah. Yes, yes, because when you charge, you just put in a, in a normal uh, normal socket uh, for AC power for elect uh, European socket with 230 volts, and yeah, the, that gives you about three kilowatts of power. And it, it charges the, the, the pack, uh, which is 13 kilowatt hours. So it, it is charging with all the stages of charging in about eight hours from uh, empty to full. If you lower the camera under mm -hmm. the car, yeah. you would see five steel boxes. That's where the, the batteries are. So there's like 150 kilos of batteries and they are attached from the bottom. And, uh, to the, uh, the car, under the car, and uh, they are occupying the space in the rear seat. And yeah, basically the, the the space inside is not taken by the battery, so you still have normally functioning the rear seat, and you even still have the place for rear tire. You see, just uh, like a access access cover here for the batteries is 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 in a in a in the rear part and there is some access uh, uh, latches below the seat so also available to see uh, just to, to service the battery and just need it and tell me about like cap capacity of the the battery um. yeah the battery is 13 kilowatt hours so it's uh, this is a package of uh, uh, total voltage 144 volts of 100 amp hour batteries so it's that's kind of the um, how many how many cells? Are there 45 there? cells. 45. 45 uh, lithium iron phosphate cells. 
these were at that time in 2008 uh, not many producers were doing that so uh, I think there, but there were just a couple of, of them at that time so it's Thunder Sky okay. manufacturer but this manufacturer I believe it's not no longer <coughs> producing uh, all placed in series what the batteries their <coughs> cells are placed in series or yeah in series yeah. so uh, 45 cells uh, nominal voltage of each cell is 3.2 volts then they, they make up 144 volts so the dashboard is actually um, made to be well it's not functioning now because I was not using this car for it, it was sitting around for some some time but actually this is the touchscreen display which was talking the, to the computer uh, in front and it was like showing this uh, health of the cells and uh, also I don't know if, if I can start this uh, maybe uh, from the battery but, yeah. uh, but anyway so this was showing the uh, the additional parameters of the car like battery life uh, whatever is not available in here and this dashboard was um, uh, adjusted uh, the standard one was adjusted so that it was showing uh, all the relevant parameters as it um, uh, as it uh, like a normal petrol car would so basically rpms were shown by rpm meter fuel gauge was showing the the level of the battery overall so mm. kind of on the rough then the uh, the temperature gauge was showing the the uh, like um, uh, weighted uh, temperature level of all the components so like temperature of the motor temperature of the controller temperature of the battery so if the if any of them is going out of the bound so then it's kind of rising up so yeah that's kind of the approach and then there's some indicator lights we also hooked to that EVMS computer that is basically um, controlling that so also that that computer was was uh, designed also to to like really to replace the car um, the car systems like to replace what what uh, petrol engine used to used to do so, okay yeah and what is this for for crazy red button yeah so this is uh, emergency switch off it was a requirement by the authorities to for the registration so I needed to make this manufacture the button so that if in case of emergency I shut off and when during when we were certifying the car <laughs> I actually asked to sh demonstrate the operation so that basically there's a requirement that if you like shut it off that and you pull it back into the operation you can uh, you need to repeat the start procedure of the car so it's kind of all kind of safety type of uh, requirements so but yeah uh, many of them make sense interesting it's really interesting car uh, and unfor unfor unfortunately we, we can't make a test drive because it doesn't drive anymore yeah no what's the, what's the reason why uh, the, yeah so the, the i was driving it uh, for like actively for like three years every day uh, to to work and back at home and uh, also uh, then later on we used it as a testing ground uh, for our uh, battery management systems that our company started producing and basically I just used it uh, for for putting like uh, our kind of testing our new versions of the product then how it how it performs how it's uh, how it's running and and also I was using the the, the 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 batteries uh, for like also for testing the controller so these batteries were quite quite well beaten up uh, during this operation so then they after like five years they started to deteriorate and uh, when it was like the range of like having 50 kilometers is not 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 being practical anymore in like in the city so so when it started to be like that so I, I I stopped stopped driving it but yeah that's kind of the, 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 the reason and for now I'm not putting the new battery pack in uh, yeah well 
also one of the reasons could be that uh, when the batteries came out like in 2008 uh, these were one of the first batteries still which were not as as good as with specs and quality and the you know that one of, they were started to deteriorate like one cell is getting worse than another cell is getting worse and it's 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 kind of the the reason of like having this car stopped and I'm not driving it now because um, I don't see yet a, well, a good 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 option like good uh, good quality good uh, parameters um, battery with for reasonable cost and I don't see the breakthrough yet since the time I started the project in the, in the, in the kind of effectiveness and cost of the batteries in, the, in effectiveness and technical parameters they have gone up but uh, with with the cost uh, well for like cost of kilowatt hour or whatever is not really uh, have not, not to break through so it's to be very practical it's still not not there yet and you also had a website or a blog about your experience yeah. with this car uh, what, what was the address uh, yeah so uh, the, the blog spot it's hr-ev.blogspot.com okay i will put a link about that in the description yeah. of this video okay. yeah so that, that blog spot i was kind of trying to put the progress how i do the conversion from start to finish so it was kind of uh, spanning about, about two years so the project started in 2008 and finished in 2010 october something okay all right well thanks for this uh, interesting uh, yeah. story about the interesting car all right